high-end restaurants, gleaming glass skyscrapers, and ever-changing waterfront sprawl surrounds Boston's Fish Pier. People ask me every day how a fish pier is still down here on the seaport, but it is. Tori Bramante grew up on the pier where his family started Atlantic Coast Seafood in 1986. I'm the third generation. Bramante owns the seafood processing and wholesale distribution facility, one of 29 businesses still located at the Fish Pier. He says the harborside location is vital to the company's survival. We do a lot of exporting seasonal fish into Europe, so it's great to be on the Boston Fish Pier so close to Logan Airport. Much of the fresh fish processed here ends up served at local restaurants. As the fish comes in from the back door, my employees then get it and break it down and fill the orders of the restaurants in the local area. What we have here is fresh local squid caught in Nantucket Sound. It's a seasonal product. We do about four to five months a year on it. Fishermen have been unloading their catch on the fish pier for more than a century. A tradition Bramante proudly continues with his own fishing boats. I've seen a lot of people come and go. I'm still here and intend to be here for a long time. A new kid on the dock is also carrying on the legacy of the historic seaport in a much different way. This bakery caters to a sophisticated clientele with discerning palates. They're really healthy, great treats for dogs. They're good for dogs to have protein allergies to say like chicken or beef. They're very, like, very easy to digest. Deb Suchman started Polka Dog Bakery in a tiny South End kitchen in 2002, quickly expanding to eight locations and shipping worldwide. Suchman opened a new 14,000 square foot kitchen on the Fish Pier in 2019. She says the location enables Polka Dog to source fresh fish from their seaport neighbors. Codskins are one of our most popular treats. We have a lot of other treats, but we bring in about 10,000 pounds of raw codskins a week give you an idea. 10,000 pounds, a lot of Kotskins. Suchman says it's important to keep the fish pier open and thriving. She's proud to be a part of the working waterfront's new generation of entrepreneurs. I think the history here is so valuable. You know, I think it's so important to keep those unique parts about Boston. The Fish Pier is owned by the Massachusetts Port Authority. CEO Lisa Whelan says businesses on the pier help sustain a thriving and diversified economy. The historic Boston Fish Pier is such a gem, right? We like to think of it as the soul of the seaport. Whelan says the entire working port of Boston has always been critical for the region's economy. The working port of Boston generates more than $8 billion of annual economic impact and supports more than 66,000 jobs. And these are really important blue collar jobs that drive a diversified economy. And so when we talk about making investments in new cranes, in harbor dredging, in advancements in our cruise terminal, it's really about supporting the local economy. Whelan says the future of the working port relies on investment in sustainable assets and reducing the impact Massport has on the environment. Mitigating threats related to climate change is also a priority for the city of Boston. When we make investments in our infrastructure, when we do upgrades and new projects, we should always be thinking. 20, 50 years out, because that's how long we expect those things to last. Reverend Mariama White Hammond is Boston's chief of environment, energy, and open space. It would be not just unwise, but in my opinion, immoral for us to do things now that don't take into account what we know is coming. The harbor is changing. She points to Moakley Park, where South Boston and Dorchester meet, and harbor waters pose a flood threat. The plan is to redesign it, looking at about $250 million to redesign it, both to make it a great place to recreate and have fun, but really as a large nature-based solution to deal with the water that we know is coming. The Stone Living Lab studies nature-based approaches to climate change. The lab launched in October of 2020, and it's a unique partnership between Boston Harbor Now, UMass Boston School for the Environment, um, and state, uh, local, and federal government. 
The lab works on climate change solutions that mimic natural environments as opposed to concrete walls and barriers. The two storms in 2018 that caused a lot of flooding really reminded people that climate change is happening now and that flooding is happening now and all the King Tide events do the same. It's really important for us to be collectively focusing on this and keeping it at the forefront of our policy and funding agendas. Reverend White Hammond says the need to invest in nature-based solutions is urgent. When you look at old maps of Boston before we filled in all the land, I feel like in essence the water is saying I'm taking my land back. When you look at where flooding is likely to go from the harbor into the city, many times it's going right into those areas that we filled in hundreds of years ago. And Chief White Hammond says improvements made at parks in Boston's North End are a good example of nature-based solutions. The Harbor Walk and other park features are now elevated and offer better floodwater drainage.